Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be discussing nuking rogue asteroids, as explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. As you're probably aware, getting hit by a large asteroid could potentially wipe out all life on Earth. A significant strike would cause massive firestorms, tsunamis, and impact winters. Lethally extended bouts of freezing weather caused by debris from the impact blocking out the sun. How big an asteroid would it take to make us all dead? Remember the meteor that exploded over Russia a few years back? It blasted out energy equivalent to 29 of the atom bombs used to destroy Hiroshima. And despite exploding 18 miles above the ground, it damaged over 7,000 buildings and injured more than 1,500 people. Now, that meteor was only 55 feet wide. The meteorite that we suspect wiped out the dinosaurs? That was closer to 7 miles wide. Anything much bigger than that, it's probably all over for us. So are there many asteroids as big as that? Um, yes. Lots. In fact, the biggest asteroid we know of, Ceres, is 580 miles in diameter. Holy f- Quite. So it's pretty important to prevent major meteorite strikes. Hold on. I thought we were talking about asteroids. Oh, yes. Okay. The super simplistic version goes like this. If it's in space, it's an asteroid. If it enters Earth's atmosphere, it's called a meteor. And if it actually hits the surface, it's a meteorite. We encounter tens of thousands of meteors every year, but according to the Planetary Science Institute, most are so small that only around 500 make it to Earth. The problem, of course, is with the bigger ones. We could just blow them up with bombs, right? There are actually several suggested methods that don't use explosions. There's kinetic impact, for example, which is a fancy way of saying ramming it really hard to knock it off course. Another idea is known as the Ion Beam Shepard, which involves a spacecraft flying alongside the asteroid, pointing an ion thruster at it to change its trajectory. And yet another approach is to simply attach a giant rocket to the asteroid and drive it off into space. But none of those things involve blowing it up with nuclear weapons. I thought this was America. Okay, let's talk about nukes. Nukes are still, at present, our best bet for deflecting an approaching asteroid. There are two possible methods here. The first is called the standoff approach, which involves detonating a device just above the surface so that the explosion changes the asteroid's course. The second, and more exciting approach, involves blowing the hell out of it. Yeah! Yeah. Thing is, you can't just slam a nuclear missile into an asteroid, high-five, and call it a day. A collision at that speed would destroy the bomb's fusing mechanism, disarming it. Instead, the missile is split into two stages. The top half is called a kinetic interceptor, which sounds like a rad Hot Wheels toy and serves a similar purpose. It exists only to be smashed into other objects at high speed. This crashes into the asteroid and makes a large crater. The bottom half of the missile then flies into the crater and detonates inside, busting the asteroid apart. So do we have any of these awesome nuclear missiles ready to go? No. It would cost about $500 million just to do a test flight, and so far... No one's put up the money. We're all gonna die in a massive asteroid collision, aren't we? No. Remember, when it actually hits us, that's called a meteorite. Tune in next time for more I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom. And in the meantime, head to dollarshaveclub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products.